This is disaster. This is Disaster Diaries Zombies by Armageddon. Oh, I get it. Armageddon means the end of the world, and his name is Armageddon. Get it? <sighs> well. If you don't like that joke, then I'm a getting out of here. <laughs> this is Disaster Diaries Zombies by Armageddon, illustrated by Jamie Littler and published by Imprint in 2014. It is about Sam Saunders, his best friend, Artie Dawkins, Emmy Lane, who lives nearby, and Phoebe Bowles. Sam is handsome and brave, Artie is smart, Emmy is tough and independent, and Phoebe mostly cares about clothes. Every day they go to school and hang around in their small town of Sitting Duck. One day, right before the school holidays, their science teacher, Professor Pamplemousse, accidentally releases a fizzy purple goo all over Simon Stumble and begins a plague of zombies. Will the friends manage to save the town and themselves from the living dead? Read Disaster Diaries Zombies to find out. I really liked this book, Disaster Diaries, Zombies. Um, it's got a fast paced story um, and it never really lets up. I mean, they're kind of on the go all the way through, which is what you want in a zombie story. There's loads of zombie action, which is brilliant. It's not just a little bit, there's loads all the way through. The characters are very fun. They're fun to read about, fun to see what they do. and quite silly as well, which makes it extra fun to read about. I also really like the advice pages 
um, which are all through the book because it is a kind of survival guide. So this one is how to spot a zombie and it's got how to set up various traps and different things like that. I also really like the illustrations. I think they're really, really good. And um, to be honest, I think I'm gonna try and find out some more books that Jamie Littler has illustrated because I really like his illustration style. I think it's very, very cool. For the negatives, um, I've got to tell you, it is quite bloody and gory. You know, people get their heads chopped off, people get blown up, people get their arms eaten off. So if you're not into that, then steer clear of this book and I'm guessing the other ones in the series. Uh, the other negative for me is that some of the jokes can be quite hard to understand. The author sometimes goes off in these funny little directions and talks about things that don't really matter, but it's kind of funny when he does that. Um, you will hear this when I read an extract in a few moments. My final thing um, is a bit of a complicated one, but basically the characters are stereotypes. You've got the main character Sam, he's very brave and very handsome and everyone likes him and you know he's the kind of guy that would save the day and then you've got Artie, you can see he's a kind of a, a big guy, he's got glasses, you know he's not very good socially but he's quite smart. You've got the very tough independent girl in Emmy and then in Phoebe you've got the girl who is only interested in earrings and shoes and makeup and stuff like that. So you know they're not really trying to do anything too special with the characters here, if we're honest. No, they're not. What are you doing? Hmm? Anyway, um, I'm going to read an extract now. Uh, so have a listen, see how you feel. Does it seem fairly easy for you or not too bad? And then you can decide whether you might like to read this book or another one in the series. So here we go. Chapter 5 For a teacher, Professor Pamplemousse could be dead thick sometimes. He never noticed when his students played pranks on him, and he definitely never noticed when the other teachers did either. Rumour has it he once got lost in the staff room for three days before eventually being led to safety by a janitor in a brightly coloured vest. And he appeared blissfully unaware that Mr. Gristle the butcher was all of a sudden only interested in one particular cut of meat. Brains, grumbled Mr. Gristle, and he swung with his cleaver. Look out, cried Sam, shouldering Pamplemousse out of the way. The cleaver swished past Sam's face. He paused for a moment, expecting to see an ear or a slice of nose slop down onto the pavement, but as luck would have it, neither one did. Pamplemousse rounded on him, wagging a finger. You could have really hurt me there, he scolded. Whatever were you thinking? Zombie! Sam shouted. Pamplemousse frowned. What did you call me? No, not you, said Emmy pointing past the teacher to where Mr. Gristle was shuffling closer. Him! The teacher narrowed his eyes and studied the butcher's vacant expression and gnashing jaws. Oh yes, you may well be right, he said. And then he ran away, crying his eyes out, directly towards where the other zombies had been hanging about earlier, up to no good. No, not that way, Artie shouted, but he was already too late. Professor Pamplemousse had run off without looking back. What should we do? asked Emmy. Die of fright? suggested Artie. We need to come up with a plan, said Sam. Well, FYI, there's no way I'm running on the grass, said Phoebe. Not in these shoes. Brains, said Mr. Gristle. Everyone else exchanged glances. Oh yeah, said Sam, swallowing nervously. I forgot about him. The cleaver swished clumsily towards Sam, but he ducked out of its path. Artie caught him by the sleeve and dragged him out of the butcher's reach. Run! 
Artie yelped, and he stumbled away with Emmy and Sam right on his heels. Like, hello, sighed Phoebe. Were you even listening? I can't run in these shoes. Then leave them, snapped Emmy. Phoebe's hand flew to her mouth. <gasps> leave them? Are you crazy? Do you have any idea how much these cost? Mr. Gristle's pudgy hand slapped down onto Phoebe's shoulder with a sound like a salmon being hit by a spade. Phoebe went rigid. Her once immaculate hair stood on end. I'm leaving the shoes, she decided. Then she kicked them off and raced barefoot across the park. This way, panted Artie, ducking under the jungle gym and through a gap in the trees. He stopped when he spotted several shapes shambling toward him, their teeth chewing the air like it was made of toffee. But not the licorice kind, because licorice flavour toffee is revolting, and anyone who says otherwise is a filthy liar. In an unusual twist of fate, Professor Pamplemousse had once attempted to make licorice flavour toffee in his lab. It didn't work though, because unlike licorice flavour toffee, it actually tasted alright. Anyway, where were we? Ah oh, yeah, zombies and that. Not this way, Artie corrected. Definitely not this way. They turned and wove past the swings and around the merry-go-round. A path led off to the right, up a steep hill known locally as Devil's Peak, uh, for reasons far too complicated to go into right now. A mad-haired old man with milky white eyes exploded from the trees by which I mean he jumped out quickly, he didn't literally explode or anything. <laughs> that would have been hideous. His fingers found Artie's shirt. His jaw dropped open and hunger blazed in those cold, dead eyes. A terrible high-pitched and piercing scream split the air. It took Artie a moment to realise the screaming was coming from him. Get it off! Get it off! He gibbered. Sam dodged left and right. His hands raised, preparing to push. The zombie's teeth chomped closer and closer to Artie's face. Hurry up! But it's an old man, Sam said at last. I can't hit an old man. Thwam! Emmy shoved the zombie hard in the chest, sending it sprawling back into the bushes. There, she scowled. Now come on, let's go this way. She turned, but another group of zombies blocked the path. Or maybe not. Boom. Boom. Brains. Brains. This book is a little difficult to read, but it is very fun to read. I would recommend it to anyone who likes reading scary stories, or anyone who likes zombies. Or, uh, well, zombies might like it too. Mr. O approves of Disaster Diaries, Zombies. Book. <laughs> 